early years, like way before my time. You weren't allowed to uh, speak your language, uh, be called by your indigenous name, um, but that went on down the line and it just it has a snowball effect, right? So the, the amount of uh, repression that happened there like made us lose our languages across the country. I'm fortunate enough to come from a community that has the largest language speaking members in all of Canada. So we're actually recognized for that and for our efforts and to preserve our language. And I think the next step is to preserve our food systems because with that language loss, we lost so much, right? We lost a lot of our culture, a lot of our teachings, because a lot of our teachings were geared towards our language. You could, they only made sense in our language. Um, and a lot of our, our food history went, went with that. It's up to our generation now to really come through and, and shine light on those, those problems that happened and to really tell our stories to make future generations understand and non-Indigenous people to understand of what our, our history is and what we lost and how we can uh, reclaim our, our story. My name is Joseph Shona. I am the chair of ICANN, the Indigenous Culinary Associated Nations. I'm a culinary professor, a father, a husband, and a strong food advocate for Indigenous foods. We're located on the traditional territories of the Three Fires Confederacy, so Ojibwe's, Odawa's, and Potawatomi's. They're located on Manitoulin Island. The most important thing for me that I'm doing now is uh, relearning our food systems and our traditional stories so that we can pass it down to future generations because all that stuff was lost it's like the summer solstice festival and that just that just signifies like a celebration of life a celebration of, of I don't want to say yeah we made it through the winter but pretty much that goes hand in hand right so we made it through another 13 moons so it's a day where all the community members came together because that's when everybody came back home from from either trading or trapping or going to hunting and foraging and then just celebrate the abundance of of what you have and then after that day then that's when everybody goes back to their way of life again so. I moved away 18 years ago to Toronto just for culinary school and that didn't really plan out too much just because what I was learning in that particular school was uh, stuff that I already knew. Because uh, being in the industry, we're cooking for 10 years already. But it's, it, it's a good city for me. Professionally and personally, I learned a lot about myself in Toronto. I learned a lot about myself in the culinary world in Toronto. That's how I got to where I am today. It's a big part of my life. It's a city where I met my wife. It's a city where my son had the first early years of his life, so that's, that's important to me and to work in some of the best restaurants in the country and really trying to figure out exactly which way I wanted to go down, what my career path was going to be. To the point for me just just taking cooking naturally and just enjoying it and loving it and now it just doesn't even feel like a job, right? And I have the opportunity now to open up the restaurant here on my home community uh, at the golf course and really showcase what I learned over the past 18 years being in the industry as a chef, but also really showcase what 
our food system has been for the past 10,000 years, right? I met my wife eight years, eight and a half years ago. Then our, our son came along. He's pretty much our center. We try to influence him as much as we can while he's not at school and he's at home with us. So he's been hunting with us since he was a baby in the middle of winter with snow on the ground. Cooking over an open fire that you start, you actually get to see the whole process and you appreciate the whole, the whole aspect of cooking gathering the wood to getting the tender, lighting the fire, controlling the temperature. It's very interactive and you appreciate your food a lot more, especially doing it with your family and, and cooking with alongside them. It, it adds uh, more, um, I don't want to say worthiness, but it adds more more appreciation to, to the food and the atmosphere. Because you, then you're creating memories, right? So you're creating a memory for your child, your wife and yourself. A lot of my accolades came from the restaurant itself, so I really think that it's, uh, I made the restaurant through the way it was. Like anybody could open up an Indian restaurant, right? So, uh, but it's, it was my own personality and my own, my own take on, on our food. And it was my story. And um, that, that's, that's what I hold to my heart. It, it was, it's my story on a plate, right? So going back to the memories of me and my three best friends playing out in the, in the winter to having that pine needle sorbet, that's my story, right? So, and nobody can take that away from me. I try to remain as humble as possible. So being honored is coming home and seeing my wife and my son, right? Recognizing all the hard work that I do and the amount of work that I do is for, for us, right? So, and, and just for us as, as a family and for us as indigenous people, it's. To be recognized by my home community as well as the elders is really holds holds me more than an award by an agency that I never ever met before. For me, it's um, the importance of knowing where my food comes from, the source of it, right? So, and really trying to be uh, have a sustainable future for our son and for for anybody's kids, right? So, we, what we do now it will impact their future and then their kids' future and so on and so on. I think we're in a good spot for our generation to really think about the outcomes of how we consume. We should uh, just look out our back door and go foraging if, if, you're, if you can or tr just try to understand the, the food system that's there and um, just try to nourish your body of, of being one with uh, your surroundings, right? So. If you're able to go go fishing, go hunting, go, go learn how to trap or or how to sustain your life, because one of these days, like the power could go out and you're stuck. I want to leave in this life the impact that the work I'm doing now on food food security and food sovereignty and just food knowledge to a point where we can teach it to future generations. Mm -hmm.